I originally had an Xbox 360 as a teenager, like most kids in the mid-2000s, but unlike them, I wasn't playing Halo 3 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, especially online, which required a lot of money and high-speed internet, as well as an ethernet cable or a wireless adapter accessory, which was expensive. And we didn't really have a whole lot of money at the time. Heck, I only ever got to try online gaming on consoles. Once I got a PS3, since the online was free, and there was a reason for that. It sucked. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Anyways, one game I remember getting for the 360 that I loved so much I ended up beating it and getting a lot of the achievements for back in the day, which I didn't really do much of, was Dead Rising, Capcom's new zombie IP that was exclusive to the 360. This was back when Xbox was trying to break into the Japanese markets and floundered like a magic carp out of water. But still, this game, along with Lost Odyssey, were two unique Japanese exclusives only available on the 360, and I remember them very fondly. But given I cannot access the console anymore due to the used game market being a joke, and no PC port of Lost Odyssey, I decided it was time to go ahead and just check out Dead Rising 1 instead. Given this game did come out within the 20 tons of a port to the PS4 and PC, it's easier to get hold of and play, especially because these days, I only play on PC. Now that has been several years since I got it on Steam, and never really played it since I got burnt out on the game back on the 360, I mean I haven't played it since 2020. I feel that it's time to finally install the game and try it again and see if this childhood classic is still as good as I remember. But also, I won't cover every single thing about the game, so just a heads up. Now let's jump into the game already. This is single-handedly the longest intro I've ever written to one of my videos. Let's do it. The plot is your typical Capcom crap fest of cheese and been there done that. Evil Pharma Corporation causes viral outbreak. Someone wants revenge and unleashes it again on the people who had nothing to do with it. Now you, Frank West, journalist, who has covered wars you know, must figure out the who, the what, the why, and the how. Along the way, you'll meet various survivors needing rescue, psychos who each offer a unique challenge and rewards, and of course, tons and tons of zombies slaying with various objects found across the various plazas of the Wilmette Shopping Mall. It's a boring snooze fest, and it hasn't aged quite well. Especially all of the cutscenes which feel artificial like AI generated everything. But then again, that could just be because the Japanese can barely tell good stories in comparison to the West. Well, the West used to tell good stories. Now it's all about pandering and shoving wokeness down our throats. And the East has yet to really make anything compelling narrative-wise. So let's just move on to the more fun stuff of the game, which doesn't involve the story, or cases, as the game likes to call them. So, uh... <laughs> so what you're saying is that I get to spend longer waiting for the inevitable, is that it? <laughs> so now let's cover the combat. This game plays like a mix of Resident Evil 1996 and early 2000s 3D fighting games akin to the bouncer. It's just awful, and gets worse once you have to deal with survivors. We'll get to them in a minute, 
Most weapons are useless or take too long to kill a zombie with. The durability varies greatly between weapons, and if you use an alternative attack if the weapon has one, it can break very fast. But in turn, it can do a lot more damage. I find the baseball bat, shotgun, sniper rifle, handgun, machine gun, katana, knives, machete, cleaver, and metal bar are the only weapons you'll need. Some weapons cannot be pocketed, such as the chainsaw, so if you interact with things, it will be dropped. If you, you get hit, it will be dropped. It's a very useful weapon, but also a burden to use, and only you can use it. As survivors are barred from using certain weapons, and not all survivors can even use weapons. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the combat. The guns are very clunky with controls so asinine. I'm not sure who came up with them, but whoever they are clearly rode the stubby bus to school and were bullied by both the normal bus and the short bus kids. Why am I holding down the right trigger, using the left analog stick to aim, and pressing the X button to shoot guns. This is absolutely nonsensical. And you may think, Oh, it's cause it's the time period the game came out in. False. This game came out in 2006. We had better first person and third person shooters for years at this point. So let's move on to the survivors. Then fill up your take home box for just two ninety nine dollars more. Golden Corral, the best buffet in the USA. God, I hate survivors in the Dead Rising series. Thankfully, Dead Rising 3 does fix them by making them smarter, more useful, and with skills you can unlock in the skill tree to make them stronger and respawn if their health is depleted instead of just dying. Plus, in Dead Rising 3, you don't have to escort them back to a safe house. You just have to do a small little quest for them, and it varies between each one of them, because each survivor is more unique in Dead Rising 3. Man, DR3 just had so much quality of life to it that it's hard to go back. Anyways, we'll start by saving some early survivors and use these guys as an example of why survivors in Dead Rising 1 are the absolute worst. This will take me a minute. Oh my god, they so knew what they were doing with these zombie attacks with the female zombies, dude. Oh my god. The Japanese, they're thirsty for the undead. Anyways, the survivors we're going to use for this example are, are, are a part of the Outdoor Plaza section, because I'm not about to try to pronounce the actual name for it, so we'll call it the Outdoor Plaza. Two are barricaded in a store, with Bert attacking us on sight. After beating his ass, he cries like a bitch. Him and A.A. Ron join me, and we rescue another survivor who you can hear half a mile away crying. <laughs> Which she has a good reason for it. She watched her baby get eaten alive by the zombies. Her name is Leia, and she's useless and hysterical. After talking some sense into her, we have to now carry her around as she walks slower than the undead. We get a taste of just how dumb the AI is as they stand around and get swarmed by the undead, and of course can't follow me in a straight line 
while stopping to re-register the correct pathway to follow. Good god, is this Half-Life 2 or what? Cause that game also was full of retarded AI. Half-Life 1 was no better. So after struggling to get these speds through the food court, we're introduced to the game's first set of psychopaths. These are the convicts, and they do not go away till later in the story, as they will just respawn every single time you kill them. God has gone guru. So after watching them coconut clonk an old man's head, we have fun running through the park in the pitch black night, but first are treated to another cutscene, this being the zombies mutating into stronger versions with red eyes. They deal more damage and have more health now. This occurs every night. Great. Very Resident Evil. <laughs> After that's all said and done, I truck my way to the redhead gold digger and take her back to the security room with the others. But of course, because of how bad the AI is, I lost AA wrong along the way. Son of a you done messed up, A.A. Ron! Now we'll move on to the Psychos before wrapping things up, but we're only going to cover a small selection of them. We'll start with the Convicts. They're not that hard to deal with, as they're in a giant Humvee. Just dodge them in their truck, car, or whatever, and melee the hell out of each guy till they're all dead. I then took the machine gun and went ahead to face the next Psycho in Wonderland Plaza. But first, let's talk about the convicts. Man, I remember these guys being tougher, but the AI proves it was just because I was too young at the time for such games. I mean, I was in my early teen years, but still, the convicts were a breeze, and they just kept crashing into everything so I can just run up to them, hack at each one until they're all dead. And then I got this big turret that'll make the next psycho a breeze as well. Adam is one of the most well-known psychos in the series. I mean, he's a crazy-ass clown with dual chainsaws, and his theme song is awesome. He'll blow fire at you, blow up balloons of nasty stuff, and spin all over the place with his mini chainsaws. He also throws darts at you, I think. So he can hit you from afar and up close. But he's a total pushover with this machine gun I got from the convict's truck. Oh, 
<laughs> After beating Adam, we rescue a mall security guard from the ride, and he shows us a shortcut back to Paradise Plaza located in the women's restroom ceiling. We have now unlocked a shortcut, and this is part of the appeal of facing psychos and rescuing survivors. You can unlock new stuff, whether it's a powerful weapon that still has durability, which sucks, or new ways around the mall. I remember the gun store in the Northern Plaza being home to one of the many psychos in Dead Rising. Once I went there, a cutscene played showing how effective Florida standard ground laws are. As far as I can throw them, but I trust people even less. Don't shoot. Look, let, let's talk this over. You can talk to my trail gauge. Don't get no closer. I'll blow you all to kingdom come. Hey, hang on. As for the fight itself, it's awful. He can blast you apart in mere seconds, you can't charge him at all. The best thing to do is get a handgun and shoot him from outside the store. This way you can hit him several times before he shoots you to near death, causing you to flee, restock on handguns and food to only come back and fight through more hordes of zombies that respawn to attack him again, rinse and repeat, 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 rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, 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 rinse and repeat. No, this record record isn't scratched. That is literally what happens. I fucking hated this psycho fight and was glad when he got his throat torn out by the now zombified guy he blasted just a while ago. You want guns so bad that y'all are willing to kill for him? Hey, wait! No! No! One of the highlights for Psychos is Cliff, who is voiced by Steve Blum. Because of course he is. I mean, it's the 2000s. He's bound to be somewhere. Also, he did voice many characters from my childhood favorite shows and games like Dynasty Warriors 4, Asun Jian, Chowder, Cowboy Bebop, and more. But yeah, he's playing a crazy Vietnam veteran who considers Frank a Viet Cong. This fight is easy as I just need to dodge his grenades and gas while moving around and firing off my shotgun and sniper at him, eventually taking him down, revealing his tragic story. You... over there... here, take this, my granddaughter. She was done in by those damn zombies when I heard her scream. I just lost it. Everything went white. Suddenly, the war. It wasn't over. Not for me. You ever wanted an SJW as a cop? Well, you got Joe, a typical left-wing woman who's kidnapping, beating, pulling a blizzard on women if you catch my drift, just not stealing their breast milk apparently, and killing them for being more attractive than her. She hates Frank for being a man and charges at you like a freaking hippo on PSP. She's got a taser and baton, but if you just leave the store, you could just shoot her as she just stands there. Showcasing just how bad the game's AI is. 
One of my favorite psychos lurks in a grocery store in the Northern Plaza. This is a story related psycho battle with only a few others being locked behind it. Steven is not a fan of vandalism in his store and now is using a Dead Rising 3 style shopping cart combo weapon looking thing to ram Frank and a shotgun to shoot you if you're too far away or try to pull a Obi-Wan Kenobi and get the high ground on top of the store shelves. He's not hard, and I just love his death. He he is definitely a funny one. My store. My. my store when I'm gone! <laughs> my store... My food... My sales... My... Customers... Have a nice day! <laughs> All right, time for the other section. If you're not new around here, you know what to expect. But for those who are, this is the cram everything else into one spot section, usually with a rant or two. Get the popcorn. The soldiers are annoying and bullet sponges. Even with melee attacks, they take forever to die. But the trade-off is they drop machine guns and give large amounts of experience points. Yet that does not excuse the annoying respawn and quickly killing you soldiers. It does not. And they even bring in drones with guns and sirens to spawn more soldiers if they find you. Jesus. <coughs> not you. Change the world. Bye bye, little bastard. Final battle is quite possibly one of the worst sections of the game. It takes forever to destroy the tank, and it's an on rails turret section cause it's the 2000s. That was all the rage back in the day kiddos. And yes, it's awful, and I hate it. It took almost 10 minutes to drain the fucker, and finally move on to the true final battle of a fist fight between the commanding soldier and Frank. If you did not level up to unlock new moves or increase your health and attack, you're screwed. There's no healing and no weapons allowed. Also, the tank is surrounded by the by the undead in the dozens of them. Yay! Now take a look at this low polygon mouse to showcase just how bad the power of the Xbox 360 was. Nice fucking model. What in the world however the music is a highlight to this game in fact I consider it one of the better soundtracks for the series tons of great psychopath music like Gone Guru the mall music itself is nice and cozy and cheesy fly routine for ju for Steven is one of the best ones too and of course quite possibly the best song of the game the credits song justified 
just banger after banger after banger. All of the musical talent that worked on this game should be proud of themselves. It's a great collaboration of various artists and genres that meld together to complete the game's emotional and dreadling pump and moments. You get your head banging as you slay the psychos or feeling accomplished once you hear Justified at the credits. It's just a great soundtrack that makes you wanna, wanna... At the end of the day, Dead Rising was the start of a new zombie IP for Capcom, and a rough one at that. I'll never understand what I saw in this game as a kid, because man does everything about Dead Rising 1 just suck, except for the music. Dead Rising may be 18 years old, but that doesn't mean it's getting any excuses. It's aged poorly, and desperately needs a remake. As long as done right, and not wrong, akin to Resident Evil 2 and 3 shit makes. From its clunky controls and combat, to its awful timer and boring story, and the many annoying unbalanced unfair moments within, Dead Rising 1 is a painfully near average but still mediocre game, yet also one I will recommend so you can see how it all started a franchise and became a hit on the 360 in, back in the day. While it's nothing special today, it's still something worth trying out. Dead Rising deserves better than what the Canadians did to it with Dead Rising 2 and 4. Hopefully Capcom of Japan will revive the series. But then again, given their treatment of Dino Crisis, Final Fight, and Mega Man, I would not hold my breath. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Mama.